Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with a look at an all new locomotive project. Recreating a World War I Pershing ROD Baldwin 280 in model form. The base model for this project is the Batman USA Consolidation 280 in Santa Fe livery, fitted with Batman's value DCC sound. Though the model is not a 100% accurate base for the ROD Baldwin, it does bear a number of striking resemblances to the prototype, making it perfect for this project. In order to make the Baldwin look more like the ROD design, features such as the front steps and headlamp will first need to be removed before adding buffers along with the supporting stays to the smoke box, with the model then gaining its ROD identity. First step is to remove the body shell. This is done by undoing a screw under the cab and then sliding the body forward, making sure the reverser is unclipped from the valve gear. I found the body on this model to be a very tight fit, so do take your time in order to avoid damage. With the body removed, the front steps and headlamp assembly can easily be accessed. The steps are each held on by one lug with a small blob of glue. They can simply be removed by giving them a gentle tug. To remove the headlamp, the smoke box door is first removed from the boiler by gently plying it from the body. The handrail is also removed to avoid damage. Like the steps, the lamp assembly is held on by a lug and a small amount of glue. First, the reflective lens is removed from the rear of the door. Before, like the steps, the lamp can gently be tugged free. With the lamp removed, the hole left in the smoke box door is filled, smoothed and painted. Once dry, the handrails are then reattached before the smoke box is reassembled. As the Baldwins were built for use on the Western Front, they were fitted with buffers and chain link couplings. For this, I've used a set of Batman sprung buffers. First, using a suitable wagon, gauge the height and spacing of the buffers. Once measured out, drill out the buffer beam into which the buffers are fitted. This allows the buffers to remain sprung. This technique is then repeated on the tender. As the model does not feature any end pockets for UK or European tension lock couplings, I'll be using a converter wagon to couple to stock. Next step is to change the model's identity into its World War I disguise. This is done by removing the original numbers using a Sharpie permanent marker and humbral thinners. I found this process to be a lot easier with both the body shell and tender removed. 
see my full tutorial video on how to renumber a locomotive via the link in the description and on screen now. With the original numbers removed, the ROD markings and numbers can then be added to the tender sides. Once the model has been reassembled, the next step is to add the supporting stays between the smoke box and buffer beam. For this, I used 0.8mm craft wire, cut to size, painted and bent into position, fitting into the holes used by the original front steps. With the stays in position, the model's World War I transformation is now complete. Constructed between 1916 and 1919, 1,500 Baldwin 280s were built for use by the War Department during World War I. These locomotives gained the title of Pershings, named after General John J. Pershing, commander of the American Expeditionary Forces on the Western Front. Interestingly, the locomotives also gained other nicknames depending on when they arrived. Locomotives which arrived during the conflict gained the name of Pershing, ones that arrived after the armistice gained the name of Felton, and locomotives ordered after January the 10th 1919 gained the name of Slade. After the war, a number of locomotives were purchased by the French and were converted, being classified as the Class 140C under the formation of the SNCF in 1937. Some of these purchased locomotives were also converted into large tank engines. Today it is believed that there are three Pershings in various forms in preservation, most notably US Army 101, which is on display at the National Railroad Museum in the USA. Thank <laughs> you. 